Yeah, this game is pretty awesome. What's going on everybody? It's Ghost Robo and today we're playing Back for Blood, the multiplayer side of things, which means we get to be the ridden, be the zombies, be the bad guys, and play some swarm. I got to play a bunch of Back for Blood earlier this week. Big thanks to Warner Brothers for hooking it up and let me know what you guys think in the comments down below, but I think this multiplayer mode is fantastic. It's a series of rounds, cleaners versus ridden, humans versus zombies, and you are trying to survive as long as possible. And they borrow an element from Battle Royale where there is a swarming circle that continues to get smaller as the time progresses. So by the end of it, you're in a small circle, the zombies are in a small circle, and everybody is just going at it. So you have this build-up time where you can kind of scavenge, collect some gear, find your guns, and then all hell breaks loose. All right, it is wave-based, but the waves are more to determine when the next swarm is going to shrink. And the swarm is like locusts. You can see them out in the periphery, um, but they're going to get pretty tight as time goes on. No round that we played lasted longer than about four and a half minutes, because by that point, it's just such close quarters, you're screwed. Now, there are a bunch of basic ridden right common infected that are coming at you at all times. And then in this 4v4 mode, the other four are going to be taking the rolls of the big bads, all right? They're gonna be playing the big guys that throw up on you, the big guys that slam you, and the dudes that are able to shoot from range. I will say that my Left for Dead vocabulary continues to overpower my Back for Blood vocabulary, and I keep wanting to call these guys boomers, even though I think they're reekers, and I keep wanting to call them just the old names, right? I just wanna go with what I know, and I'm trying to really learn. This mode, though, I didn't have to learn anything. I, I just learned that it's insanely fun and it feels very natural. It's a really good way of trying something a little bit different, but just still allowing you to get at the zombie killing action without worrying about too many like nuances or different rules. It's just, hey, survive as long as you can. And then when you're the bad guys, kill as quickly as you can. All right, and you gotta coordinate and there's some leveling up and some progression. The cleaners are able to use their deck of cards to help sort of pick and, and up, improve their stats and improve what they want to do as a team and you want to kind of coordinate with your players like okay I'm going to focus on medic based cards you're going to focus on soldier based cards whereas the ridden are using points that they acquire from kills and damage to actually level up their characters mid round so cleaner is much more of a, of a prep and attack and then ridden is much more of like okay adjust as we go which I think is kind of like evolutionary right there they're big and they're bad and they're going to kind of adjust as things progress and you can even spend points to help upgrade these common infected right here which is a very smart thing to do now you're seeing the swarm that ugly yellow glow with all of the bugs in tow it feels like a freaking midwest summer cicada season the brood is here and that is encroaching upon us and it's getting pretty tight as you can see and we're only at two and a half minutes so now you really do have to be mobile and flexible and i feel like this mode is just such a great teamwork enhancer in fact it's required you have to decide how you're going to play this, and you have to either hole up together or be very mobile together. You've got to make sure communication is always at the forefront of your mind. So if someone gets stuck or stopped, you can unleash them, you can release them, and you can pick them up. Now right here, you're going to see all of us got caught in one spot, and this is where the barf is its best, right? They started barfing all over this floor. Everybody is dying. Now I was trying to help save them. I can't save them. If I try to save them, I'm going to get vomited on again, which is going to kill my health. And you're starting to see a lot of the fun dynamics, the back and forth that did take place in Left 4 Dead multiplayer, now existing in Back for Blood. I think at the end of the day, Back for Blood is basically Left 4 Dead 3. Now, there's some good things about that. There's some not so great things about that. But for the most part, I think people are going to love that this is just a new Left 4 Dead albeit with different names that make it a little bit tricky for me to remember what all the different yeah, monsters are called. It. It's a best two out of three, so you have to survive longer to win the round, and then you go to the next round, and you gotta win that twice, and if it goes to a third, like then it's sort of an ultimate showdown. Now, for the Ridden, I'm switching sides so you can see all of these upgrades. I found both okay, sides exactly. fun to play, and that, that surprised me. I expected the zombies time. to be more enjoyable, but surviving adds so much adrenaline, right? Like, trying to get that timer to tick a few seconds higher, and you get in these interesting situations where you're just running circles, trying to add a few extra seconds to your clock. It's really cool. Here you'll see you have all sorts of different 
characters. You have four different ridden, and then there's three varieties within each. And then you can upgrade all those guys. And your team upgrades are cumulative. So that might be information overload. But basically, you're spending points to upgrade their defense, their offense, and their utility. Each of the three varieties has some different abilities. And I believe that there's a limit to how many of each can be. I think you can only have like two players yeah. playing the same class, but they can be different gotcha. varieties. Yeah, and then some are locked out. I think that was just because of the beta. I don't know. Um, I powered up you didn't have as much access. Times, and like I'm thinking they're going to add more ridden as DLC and sort of just like the longevity of the game progresses. Okay. But at the beginning, it's going to yeah. be these four. And, and they're honestly very different diverse and allow nice. for a lot of unique strategies. <laughs> Yeah. My difficulty came in that the the oh, hawker yeah. here looks a lot like the hunter, yet it doesn't behave the same. She's able to leap very far, but cannot pounce, at least the variety that I was playing. Right, so right, there's some interesting one. elements that just are different that you're going to have to get used to. This one right here made me think of Evolve, right? This is basically Gorgon attached right, onto a wall, now. spitting down. This range attack was really beneficial. You're trying to basically hit guys from afar to start dinging their damage. If you just barf on them at the beginning or try to tall boy slam them at the beginning, it's not going to be enough damage. But here, I really like going range, and then you get in for the more AoE kill. Um, and we seem to do a fantastic job of just picking a wide variety of characters. And if they were in a building, taking advantage of their close proximity, and if they were spread out, switching it up and taking advantage there. You'll notice I can only spawn if I'm far enough away, if my timer is counted down, and if I'm hidden. So there's a few requirements here to be uh, to be able to respawn. Um, and I felt like this was balanced quite well. I didn't feel like either side had too much of an advantage. Uh, but I'm going to really launch some evil goo and just start helping really hurt these cleaners. The down guy is really dying, and then I prevented his compatriots uh, from picking him up, and we got another barfer in there coming in to add fire to this evil acidic spray. You can also come in for some basic melee attacks, and, and every character sort of has a primary usage and then a secondary usage. So like the hawker is firing from afar, but can also leap great distances. Um, the reeker uh, obviously can barf, but then can also come in for close melee. Now this guy here is sort of my finisher, right? I loved using the tall boy to come in and zero in on one or two targets, especially if they were going for a pickup. So I'm waiting for my timer. I'm spawning in. You see they're only at a minute 45 and already feeling the pain. Now this guy over here is isolated, but I do notice that this group is all together. And the specific tall boy I pick has a giant area of attack, uh, area of effect attack. So... That's it right there, but not very good usage. Here, I'm going to charge in, which is his secondary, and then yeah, use this big area of effect attack that just sort of bashes the entire area, which was perfect for that scenario. And now we've got them very damaged and very spread apart. I'm going to go in and try to get this guy. we got some common infected that are helping out. And, and as I mentioned, you can upgrade those common infected to be very, very deadly. You can add uh, armor to them. You can add different effects, damage effects. And this is just bad. They're trying to pick each other up. They have no chance. They have no hope. And it's just over for the crew. And there's this nice, like, slowdown effect at the end to be like, you have destroyed them. And you get to have your Hulk moment. You'll also notice that the swarm cloud has come in really close. And that was helping us as well because you are damaged when you're in that swarm cloud. And you can start using that kind of as another character, right? It's your barrier, right? You can kind of back them into the corner where, hey, you want to go further? You want to get away from me? You're going to be screwed. And it becomes really interesting when that swarm cloud is inside of buildings right and then you have to worry about like okay half the building is blocked off with the swarm half the building's not do we still want to stay here do we need to move and it keeps things very fluid i'll talk about campaign in a different video but this multiplayer mode blew me away and i had so much fun i think they hit the nail on the head of how to establish a back and forth and just the different interactions between the ridden and the cleaners and it's just so much fun to play so right now multiplayer pvp is looking hot for back for blood i hope they have a lot of different maps I hope they have maybe some tweaks to the mode and then honestly it's like yeah get ready to bring in new ridden because they're so fun to play and you add one and it just changes the dynamics i did pretty darn good here 92 ridden kills i don't know why it says 143 player kills maybe it's damage or something but there's no way i killed 143 players but maybe that's how many downs or maybe the scoreboard was just trying to help me soak up the victory either way that's the video thanks so much for watching back for blood is in beta now you guys can probably check it out it's on consoles and pc but let me know what you think in the comments down below hit that like button if you enjoyed the video and until next time everybody thanks so much for watching Have a fantastic day we'll see you all later